How do you aim accurately with side spin? For players looking to take their game to the next level, learning how to adjust your aim is a long and slow process. But what is it about adding side spin to a shot that makes it so much more difficult to execute? And how do you start learning how to adjust your aim to make these shots? I'll be giving you my answer for these two questions, which includes a three-step process for learning how to aim side spin shots, as well as the single most important variable you need to consider when correcting your aim. While the use of side spin greatly increases a player's ability to control the cue ball, it comes at a cost. When shooting the cue ball along the vertical axis, the cue ball travels in a perfectly straight line away from the cue. When shooting with side spin, however, not so much. And this is all due to the effects of deflection and swerve. When I hit the right side of the cue ball, it veers off to the left of the line of my cue. This is known as deflection or squirt. Notice, however, that after the spin on the cue ball has a chance to start gripping the felt, it actually begins to swerve back towards the original line that my cue was pointed down. Now dealing with these two variables is already difficult, but even worse, they vary depending on the equipment that you're using, the speed of the shot, the amount of spin you use, the amount of top or bottom used, and even the distance between the cue ball and the object ball. On the majority of side spin shots, if you're striking with right spin, you'll have to aim your cue slightly to the right of the path that you want the cue ball to travel down, because it deflects to the left. On some of these shots, the cue ball spin never has a chance to grip the felt of the table, so the cue ball never swerves, forcing me to aim more to the right. On a slower shot with bottom, however, the swerve can be so severe that I actually have to aim slightly to the left of where I want the cue ball to travel. And if all of this wasn't enough to deal with, we still have to think about how cut-induced throw and spin-induced throw will affect the object ball. Right spin throws the object ball to the left, and left spin throws the object ball to the right. But even both of these are speed and cut angle sensitive. So now not only are you doing guesswork to get the cue ball to travel down the desired path, you also have to change your aiming point on the object ball. Trying to get all these variables right is an extremely difficult task, so how can you start learning how to adjust your aim for side spin? Let me preface this by telling you that there is no simple one-size-fits-all aiming or adjustment system that is going to work all the time. Instead, one of the most important parts of a good shot routine is visualization, and what you need to do is train your ability to visualize shots with side spin so that you can start aiming them automatically in your subconscious, and really the only way to do that is to dive headfirst into using side spin. Step 1. Start learning how to compensate for squirt and swerve. This is one of the drills in the World of Pool and Billiards app that introduces you to compensating for side spin. What you do in this drill is place two balls in equal distance away from the center diamond, and you shoot with varying amounts of left, top, right, bottom, and speed. And as you're able to successfully get the cue ball between the two balls, you slowly close the gap between them, reducing your margin for error. When you're shooting this drill, really focus on visualization during your pre-shot routine. Really take your time on these shots and take notes of how much you were off by. What you'll notice is that the single biggest factor to account for when adjusting your aim for side spin is the speed of the shot. Not only does a higher speed increase the amount of deflection, but it also decreases the effect of spin-induced throw and swerve. On a high-speed shot, the spin of the cue ball doesn't have enough time to start gripping the felt, so it never has the chance to have a significant impact on the path of the cue ball prior to contact with the object ball. Because of this, if you ever change your mind about the speed of the shot, you need to stand back up and reset before shooting. Step two, go all in. I have a friend who plays consistently every week. We were playing a match a while back and I noticed a really simple side spin shot that he could have used to get out of one of the racks in a set we were playing against each other. So after the set, I tried to show him the shot, but the response I got was, I don't know how to use side spin. And I couldn't even get him to try the shot. Now, if this was your average one of the mill bar player, I get it. But this guy practices all the time and legitimately wants to improve his game. Now when I really started seeing big jumps in skill level was when I just went for it. I didn't know how to aim with top left, but give me a cue and some table time and I'm gonna shoot this shot until I can make it. And not just until I make it once, but until I can make it consistently. This is the kind of attitude that you need for improvement. Nothing in life worth doing is easy, and while this is just pool, if you wanna play with the best of them, it's gonna take some time, effort, and sacrifice. When I first started using side spin, there was a short period where it was all I shot. It didn't matter if it wasn't necessary or even detrimental to my position, I was gonna put side spin on everything. While this isn't a good practice in the long term, I do believe doing this over the period of a month or two helped speed up the learning process for me and helped me adopt side spin into my game much faster than I would have otherwise. It's sort of equivalent to how the fastest way to learn a language is to do so through immersion. By putting side spin on every shot, it's going to force you to learn how to compensate for it. While this time can be frustrating, as you're likely to see a sharp but short-term decrease in your playing ability, it can also be very rewarding. 
You get to try out crazy shots you wouldn't normally shoot, and do things with a cue ball you probably didn't even know were possible. Just accept from the start that you're going to lose some matches and games that you would probably normally win, and the process will be a lot more enjoyable, as you won't put so much pressure on yourself to perform. Over the period of a month or two, you'll be able to go from a player who doesn't use side spin at all, to one who's actually quite proficient at it. Step 3. Scale back with purposeful practice. Once you get to a place where you're able to pocket a majority of the shots you're supposed to make, you can start scaling back your use of side spin to where it should be. In my experience and from my observations of professional players, that's about 50-60% to 60 of shots. Now at this point, you won't have mastered side spin, but you can start identifying certain shots you're struggling with and start practicing them. Constantly working on the weaker parts of your game to improve your overall skill level. While playing matches, I like to document balls that I missed and I feel like I should have made, and in my practice time, I'll go back and shoot these shots until I can make them say 5 or 10 times in a row. The table maker tool was actually the original reason I started working on the World of Pull and Berries app, just so I could document my misses. Simply drag the balls over into place, draw some lines if you want to, and then save the image to your phone. Then when you're practicing, you can go back and look at the images and practice the shots that you've missed and you've struggled with. So for a brief recap, if you're hitting with right, most of the time you'll need to aim your cue slightly to the right of the line that you want the cue ball to travel down. The speed is going to play the largest factor in how much you'll need to adjust your aim by. With the harder you hit, the more to the right, and if you hit at a slower speed, with bottom or an elevated cue, you'll maybe even need to aim to the left. The only way to really get a feel for these shots is to dive headfirst and spend a month or two experimenting with them until you are proficient at it. After that, you can scale back your use and only practice the ones you're struggling with. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to ask the like button if you can try out their new playing cue and then proceed to break with it. Also, if you would like to continue improving your game while simultaneously supporting this channel, check out the World of Pull and Billiards app, link will be in the description below, and that'll do it for today. See ya.